Hi, this is Steve Good. Welcome back to the Scroll Saw Workshop. In tonight's video demonstration, I want to take you through um, moving and positioning objects in CorelDRAW uh, to help create scroll saw patterns. Uh, this is a subject that I haven't talked too much about, and I've had a few questions about it, so I wanted to go through some of the basics. Okay, as we move over to page two here of this Corel Draw document, you'll see I have a few very basic shapes on the screen. And I want to use these basic shapes to show you how to position uh, objects on the screen so you can either weld them together or subtract them from each other or whatever you need to do to create your scroll saw pattern. Uh, the first thing I want to do is start out over here with these two small circles that I've created. And let's say we wanted to make a wheel and we needed to have a two inch uh, circle for a pattern, but we wanted a quarter inch diameter hole cut out of the middle of it uh, to insert an axle rod through. So the first positioning key I want to talk about and the shortcut is the P key as in Papa. And if I select an object and hit the P key, it will center that object in the screen on the and on your sheet of paper as you print it out. So with the blue circle selected, the larger circle, I hit the P key to center that. Now I'm going to select the yellow small circle and hit the P key and you can see that it has now centered that smaller circle inside the larger circle. So now I could select both of these objects by using my pick tool and lassoing all, both the objects. Now I can go up here to my back minus front click on that and you can see now I have removed let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see it in the video you can see I have enlarged or it re removed that smaller uh, quarter inch diameter circle from the outer two inch circle so now we could print this out uh, as a pattern and we would have a two inch wheel with a quarter inch hole for the axle in the middle so the P key will center objects on the screen and that gives you the ability to uh, keep everything exactly centered in your in your uh, pattern so let's move that aside now let's talk about a different way of doing the same thing I'm going to take this uh, larger square and I'll just center it in the screen here so you can see what we're doing and I'm going to take this smaller square and I want to center these two objects together just like we did this circle only I'm going to do it in a slightly different way I'm going to take my pick tool select both objects now up here in my arrange menu item I can pull down to the align and distribute and you can see I have all these options over here to align left align right align top align bottom align centers horizontally and align centers vertically and if you'll notice out to the right each one of these has a shortcut key L for left R for right again T and B for the top and bottom and E and C for uh, centering the object uh, horizontally and vertically so with both of these I'm going to use the shortcut keys rather than the menu items because that's what you'll want to learn eventually to speed yourself up quite a bit with both of these objects selected I'm going to hit the C key and you can see what that did is it aligned the centers of both of these objects vertically. Now I can hit the E key which does the same thing only it centers the two objects horizontally. So I've accomplished the same thing I did with the P key uh, but in, uh, in this case I did it with the square. Now the difference is uh, I centered both of these objects relative to the center of the screen. In this case I've actually centered the two objects relative to each other. In other words I could do the same thing with these objects even if they weren't in the center of the screen. As long as I have them both selected and I hit C and I hit E now I have both of them centered to each other and with both of them selected I hit the P key and center them on the screen. So again I could do the same thing now by selecting both of them go up here to my front minus back and I could remove the smaller square from the inner square. Okay now let's back up and look at some of the other keys uh, uh, quick shortcut keys we have available to us. I'm going to select both of these objects with my pick tool. I'm going to hit the L key on the keyboard which will align the left edge of each square together. When I tap the R key, the same thing, only it aligns the right edge. T aligns the top and B aligns the bottom. Uh, so those are all fairly obvious. So let's say we needed to create a tab sticking out the right side of this square that we wanted to insert into another piece of the project. I could select both of them, tap the R key to center it you know, on the right side of the screen. I could tap the E key to center it horizontally. Now I could deselect both objects, select just a smaller object, and using my arrow keys on the keyboard, 
I can move this out three clicks, and now when I select both of them, hit the weld key, you can see I've created a uh, centered tab on this piece of the project that we could use to insert into another part of the pattern. Okay, a couple more things here I want to talk about. One is uh, our guidelines. If you go to any either of the side ruler or the top ruler, click your left mouse button and drag. You can drag onto the screen a guideline. Now these guidelines aren't visible in your pattern when you print them out. They're just on the screen to give you the ability uh, to position things accurately. With this guideline selected, I'm going to hit the P key to center it, and I'll do the same thing with one on the side and hit the P key. So now we know this is the exact center of the screen. In the view menu, I can turn on different options for what I want to snap to. So with the view selected, I can pull down and do snap to guidelines. Now when I grab one of these objects and move it close to these guidelines, it'll actually snap to those guidelines so I can line them very accurately uh, against those guidelines. So let's say I wanted to take this small scrolled pattern right here and duplicate it on the top of this square and I wanted to have two of them, uh, mirror images of each other on each side of this guideline, accurately positioned. I can take and move my guidelines to the center and then slightly below the top of this. I can take this piece of clip art, move it over till it snaps to that guideline, move it down till it snaps to that guideline. Now with it selected, I can go over to my transformation and do the scale and mirror icon, make sure I have the mirror horizontally icon selected, do apply and duplicate, create an exact duplicate of that. Now it's mirrored from the original and I can do the same thing. I can snap to the center guideline, snap to this guideline, and when I let go, I know I have both of these exactly centered and even on each side of the pattern. So now when I select the weld tool to center this, uh, to center these, or to weld all these tools together, you can see that I have the beginning of a pattern and everything is nice and balanced on each side. So the, uh, the guidelines are very handy for using as a temporary positioning device. It gives you the ability to um, create things that are very accurate in your patterns. Uh, so you definitely want to use those to help position different parts of your pattern. Okay, there's a few of the basics for moving objects around the screen. There's more to it than that. There's more things to know. And again, I'm no expert in Corel Draw by any chance. Um, so if there's other people out there that have quicker or faster ways of doing what I'm doing, feel free. Um, I'm just doing these videos to help the scroll solvers out there create patterns in Corel Draw a little more easily. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.